feels important, yeah, to, you know, the, the importance is, is the union of a lot of ex-members, you know, with, and especially people from different periods of time, like when we had uh, Paul and Sean from the human era, now there's Gene who play with me, an individual, and Bobby, they play together in Symbolic. So it just shows that we can reunite any era, any chapter that death had. Um, and above that, you know, the, the importance would be to share the music with the fans. It really, the idea came from a fan's point of view. We didn't sit around thinking how we can go out and make money, you know, just people started, it started with some drum clinics and the the spectators wanted to see the see Gene and Sean play death songs. And uh, the organizer had an idea instead of just playing to a CD or whatever that uh, we should get the full musicians on a stage and do it. And it grew from there into a real concert tour. Um, it, as far as your question about Sweet Relief, I don't think we've worked with Sweet Relief in uh, in a while. And I don't know why. But just to st set the record straight, I don't, I don't know what happened with that. But we were. We were. And now we're. Yeah, it gave us an opportunity 20 years later to play stuff, you know, that we didn't think we'd ever be playing again. None of us have, you know, Death's last tour ever was in 1998 and much earlier for the members of this lineup. So it's been a really long time since we've played these songs. And it's kind of, you know, this is stuff we wrote when we were in our mid-20s and now we're in our mid-40s. So physically, you know, we have to prepare ourselves to play like we did when we were young men <laughs> so that that aspect really changed and it's it's been a welcome change you know it gives us you know kind of a new approach to preparing and that makes us feel young again for a short time uh, it feels pretty good you know I hooked up with Testament back for the Gathering album and that was a great experience to be playing alongside of Dave Lombardo and obviously Ch Chuck Billy and Eric Peterson. And we had a great run. I was in the band for six or seven years straight. And it was great. It, I mean, it, it really vaulted me to a higher place in the music world, you know. And, and to come back now with Testament status being so much higher. They're a bigger band than when I was in it it's it's amazing i mean it's it's been fun you know learning relearning songs that i was part of and some of the old classics that people still love and obviously with gene being in the band as well as we're doing death together i mean feel right at home because you know, for me that's that's my favorite drummer to play with so it feels great to be in the lineup with these guys Yeah, well, Gene, for example, because, I mean, he, that guy gives his best every night, and that's awesome to see someone who's really my age and, you know, come similar path as me to see him still, you know, hungry to play. That keeps me on edge, and I love it. And uh, also musicians like Alex Skolnick and Bobby Koble, you know, excellent guitar players, excellent overall musicians. And I'm standing next to them, making sure, you know, I'm not the reason for something going wrong. And, uh, you know, and in the past, uh, Chuck Schuldiner had a lot to do with pushing me to achieve something higher and something new, you know. And I, A lot of these guys that I've played with throughout the years, you know, I've, I've tried to take in something from everybody and, you know, use it to my advantage to get better and, and mostly to remember to enjoy what we're doing, you know, you don't take it too serious. The first process in my choosing is if the music, if it feels like I could give everything to the music, because if it's, if it's just something that I'm just going to play some notes and not really care about, it's not fair to the person who's writing the material or producing it. It's, that's usually the main thing, you know, the, you know, maybe the idea for some musicians is to go by how much the job pays. But for me, the number one thing is if I can get into it and give it everything I have. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's got to make sense for me. It, it doesn't matter what style it is. It doesn't matter what level. It could be a band's first album. It could be something well-known. You know, I've done a lot of instrumental records, and those don't go over so well because they're usually just for other musicians. So I've played on some really, you know, below-the-line stuff, but it doesn't bother me because I get my enjoyment out of it to, you know, making the other people in the lineup happy. That was a pretty amazing experience. The thing with Colvatus is there's a lot of ingredients in their songs. It's it's well thought out. It's uh, it's pretty technical, to use an overused word. And I was coming back from a European tour, and I stopped in Montreal on the way home to California, and I worked on the songs with Bart for maybe... I don't know, like three days, I had to learn the whole album. And then we drove up to Pia's studio in the mountains of this beautiful lake, and I had another two or three days to record everything. So it was like long work days and intense concentration. <laughs> so it was pretty difficult. It was one of the harder things I've done, but um, we managed to get through it, and the band was happy. And that, that album, I think it's one of my good ones, you know, because made friends with Yannick the drummer and we went on to work together later down the road just a few years ago and uh, yeah it was cool it was it was nice to record in Canada it was nice to visit the studio up in I don't know I don't even know if there's a town it's it's in the middle of nowhere just trees and lake so it was great man I'm glad they asked me on it was fun well there's been more challenging material that I've done that might have been one of the hardest overall sessions just because we had to do it in such a short amount of time and I never met these guys before so I just come off of the plane and here they are and boom here's all the songs and stuff that might have been one of the hardest now it, it wasn't a bad experience it was it was it was intense but Bart took care of me at his house and Yannick was a good guy and Pierre in the studio was amazing so it was hard but it was you know good hard work um, I've done some more technical material, like with, um, there's a keyboard player named, named uh, Vitaly Kupri. He played for our attention, and he's playing right now with Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And I've recorded some stuff for him, and that there's some, <laughs> some pretty musical stuff going on there. Maybe that's some of my harder stuff, I guess. I don't know. It's hard. I have to kind of replay everything. And, I was with ESP for years, and I'll never say anything bad about ESP at all. It just, sometimes you f just feel like, you know, trying something new. And I didn't, I didn't leave or stop playing ESP for any reason. I just, I felt like that the success of their company, which is good for them, just grew so big that ESP was becoming, you know, you could see it everywhere. I'm just a kind of musician where I like to find just something, as small as it may be, as long as it's my own thing. I just always look for something unique, and I wasn't getting that with ESP. So I was on a forum, I think, and I just asked a question, like, does anybody know any kind of, you know, radical design basis, something that's a little out of ordinary? And I wish I could remember who it was. He sent me two links. One was for, I think it was called Mammoth guitars or mammoth basses and they were really extreme they look like uh science fiction designs or something and the other was thor bass and i immediately liked the look of it so i just contacted the owner and started a conversation with him and found out that you know he puts a lot of quality into his work it wasn't just about the look like and i'm glad because you know he cuts the wood and starts a bass for you he doesn't just pull one off a shelf and mail it to you so it's it's his design, but it's fully cu customizable. <laughs> I think that's a word. And uh, ah, when I when I received it in the mail, you know, I opened it up and I realized at once I was playing the best bass guitar I've ever touched in my life. So that was a five string, and a couple of years later I got a six string made, and a couple of years later I bought a, a seven string fretted. I don't bring that one on the road. That one's a little difficult to play. I'm gonna have to get better to play that bass but I have the the pair of fretlesses I bring with me with death and testament equally switch off I turn the five string into a three string bass 
How did that change come around? Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. Um, it happened kind of weird. Like, I never thought to do it. It's just... Uh, actually, the friends of ours that are on this tour right now, Obituary, hired me in 2010. Terry Butler was still playing with Six Feet Under at the time, and he was gone, and Obituary had, I don't know, it wasn't maybe 10 or 15 shows to do in Europe. And so I just came in, filled in for Terry for that short time. And, you know, these guys have been playing these songs for 25 years. They recognize it all. But when they just throw, you know, 20, 25 songs at you and say, here, learn our whole set. To me, it was like information overload. It was starting to blend together. And I needed to learn it in a short time. So I got to Belgium a day early and I was sitting in the hotel room and I was looking at this bass. And, you know, obituary doesn't use a million notes like Quovatis, for example and uh and i just thought like man it would be cool if i just get rid of what i don't need to look at and maybe it will help me memorize the patterns and so i started taking strings off the bass just to help me concentrate and of course when the strings were gone the tension the neck moved and i couldn't get get the right sound so then i started sp spreading them apart you know so I have a five-string configuration with one, three, and five. I have the three low strings sp separated like that. And I got through, and I learned the songs. And the very first show, I played relatively mistake-free. And I said, well, I'm not going to change it. I had to keep it this way now. And, of course, Trevor, he liked the way it looked. He said something like, oh, it looks like a trident, you know, <laughs> like a weapon. Because the Thor bass has the exaggerated hooks, and then the three strings made it look kind of like a some kind of, you know, spear or trident or something and so i just kept it and of course everybody it drew everybody's attention and you know as a performer that's something i kind of listen for like ah i got something new <laughs> so i just kept it like that and i've played i've played the three string w in various bands now and now it's become like a new trademark of mine and i love it it's it the strings are really separated and it's it's difficult to play and it's kind of a it's an interesting thing to throw in to keep me focused too you know For a band like Death, it took a while. Uh, for Obituary, it was easy because that's the way I set it up to play their songs. And then when I started using it with Death, it was a little tricky because Death has some, you know, <laughs> some more stuff going on. And so I had to kind of learn how to cover that space, but it, it came to me. And uh, and I, I played in Testament as well. So it, it it feels great, and it's a really heavy bass, so it's just like a just just the simple low end of a of a bass guitar but I switch off with a six string so uh, you know here's a bass with a million notes and then the three strings has limited notes so I got everything I need between the two yeah sure I mean there's a lot of you know a lot of bass players that just play really in the pocket and play you know the low root notes of the guitar and don't really go up high and sometimes that that fourth string or some people call it the first the, the the highest one sometimes it doesn't get any activity and you know I, it it's not a big deal i mean it's for show obviously but it like i described it's kind of a fun thing for me because it is different so i don't know i wouldn't recommend it to somebody who puts thought into it too much but if they want to have fun try it out i guess and maybe I'll start something new. I don't know. Everybody wants to go four strings, five strings, six, seven, eight, nine. Everybody's adding, adding, adding. So I took one away and just played bare minimal. You know, that's... I always have to think long about this because I listen to a lot of stuff, but I don't know who's new. I discovered a band that I thought was new, and I was just told by somebody they've been around forever. Um... It's a band from Norway. I think it's pronounced Sog. It's S A H G. I never heard of them. I got this. I got this album, and I listened to it, and I fell in love with it. And I was showing everybody, and somebody walked in and said, "Oh, I know these guys. I met them. They're from Norway, and all this stuff. They have several albums." Like, all right. So sometimes I'm. <laughs> sometimes I don't know about this new, you know, the new stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. New new young bands. I don't know. Um, what's the name of the band? I, the Beneath... Beneath the Buried. Have you, Beneath the Buried in 
between the bear and me thank you. yeah the bass player has his own kind of trio fusion band it's uh, to Wayne oh fuck <laughs> i'm smart <laughs> yes this band <laughs> i love this band they are new they are young and they're excellent so there you go there's your answer that's my jam <laughs> i forgot i had it on making money <laughs> there's there's a, only a select few bands that that really break through to some level where the money's pouring in uh, the rest of us just we manage our finances and adjust our lives to keep a balance between surviving and staying happy and as long as that balance is there I'm fine we're fine um, but the myth about you know album downloads and CD sales and merch and ticket sales there's so many people involved the money gets evaporated you know the key is to stay out of negative hope to break even and if you make some good so that's a big myth about heavy metal <laughs> and I've been you know we've all been doing it for 30 years and I mean we're still doing it the same as we ever have that we actually play what you hear like so many bands have you know samples and and backing tracks and stuff and it's becoming commonplace now and we're the type of guys that grew up when that technology didn't exist so we believe in the integrity of what we play so you know if anybody thinks there's fake music going on that's a myth we're we're playing what you hear we rehearse we warm up we take our music seriously so Thank you.